I'm Daniel Skuka for ESA Web TV. We're here in Belgium at European Space Weather Week, and we have the unique opportunity to ask uh, some of the participants in this scientific conference some questions. And uh, three of them have actually volunteered to answer a single question. We've worked hard to come up with what we're going to ask, and here we go, live on camera. Petra, what is space weather? Well, it's amazing out there in space, there's a lot of energy floating around and that energy is coming from the sun and it has an impact on Earth and that's why we care about it. That's space weather, the energy out there in space impacting us. Excellent, thank you. Lucila, how does some of this energy, this space weather coming towards Earth affect, for example, navigation? Yes, this big amount of energy, as Peter was saying, uh, is perturbing the, the atmosphere, the upper part of the atmosphere, and the signals that travel from the transmitter on board the satellites coming towards the Earth can be jeopardized by this perturbation. The signals are of bad quality in this condition, so the navigator cannot work. This is important also to extend the coverage of the uh, satellite navigation system and to extend the quality of the, the system. This is for instance, the case for Galileo, new constellation, that will also increase this increasing and will increase even more the, the possibility of these navigators. Thank you very much. Last question for Ellen. About 160 years ago, there was something called the Carrington event. What was that? Well, the Carrington event is actually one of the biggest storms, probably the biggest, and it's used as a benchmark as the extreme storm of space weather effects. And on the 1st of September in 1859, just before noon, um, Richard Carrington witnessed a, a bright light coming from the sun. It's, and this was the first ever witnessed, observed uh, white light flare. Um, a day later, actually less than a day later, 17 hours approximately, there was a massive, what we now know is a magnetic storm on, at the Earth. And this was the first time that, that these two things started to be connected. That this was, so this was the first time that space weather was really, really talked about being something on the sun. And, and of course that discussion came much later and what we know now is that um, these things do affect technology. At this time, the, the, the technology, the communication technology was the telegraph and it's, it, it's been reported that during the, this, this period, the 2nd and the 3rd of September, that the telegraph engineers witnessed um, sparking um, uh, from the telegraph and they witnessed um, when the whole thing was turned off, it was still actually powered. So um, messages were still being able to be sent and received. Um, so they, they didn't understand what this was and why this was, but it was reported as a, a, an incredible phenomena. Also at that time, the, the aurora was, was actually known about, but they didn't understand why it happened. Um, but it was actually viewed much further south. So people in Caribbean, for example, could witness the, the aurora for the first time. Um, and this was an incredible uh, event. And of course, we now know that that was the, one of the first reported space weather events. And the, the currents that they were, the, the, they were coming into the, the telegraph system at the time, we now know are called geomagnetically induced currents caused by the rapid changes, the rapid large changes in the Earth's magnetic field which do cause problems in the modern day technology. Great. Petra, Lucilla and Ellen, thank you very much for speaking us to today. I'm Daniel Skuka for ESA Web TV from Belgium. For more information on space weather, access the ESA website at www.esa.int slash spaceweather.